A common question I get about the DMC2 machines are, can they cut small parts, specifically for watch components or jewelry sort of applications? Now obviously the machine has the power to do tiny machining operations, but it also needs to be very rigid and accurate, so that it's actually able to make small and precise movements effectively, otherwise small details will be lost and you'll break your end mills very fast. So to test this out, I hopped on AliExpress and searched for the smallest end mills I can find, and I ended up getting some general purpose carbide 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0.1mm diameter square end mills. These end mills are insanely small, and my biggest concern is just snapping them from handling them since they are so fragile and of course brittle. I found a block of 6061 aluminum I had laying around, and I modeled it in Fusion 360, and I decided to do something quick and simple and just model some smooth curved text saying DMC into the material, and I modeled one set of letters for each end mill size that I have. I basically adjusted the font size of each so that the width of the letters closely matches the width of the end mill I want to test. And then in CAM, I used a contour operation and selected one side of each letter's edges to tell the machine to walk along the curve of each letter, going backwards and forwards, ramping down at a very shallow rate. End mills do not like steep ramping or plunging straight down, so I'm using some arbitrary small ramping numbers from my own experience, and even though I can plug the parameters into a feeds and speeds calculator, in this situation I'm going to manually come up with some numbers that are extra slow, just to make sure I don't snap an end mill. And what that pretty much means is that I'm making sure I keep the chipper tooth extremely small, well within 0.01 millimeters. So going over to the machine now, here is the initial cleanup for the top surface of the material with a 1 millimeter end mill. I could have definitely stepped over a lot more to speed this operation up. I need to have a precise top surface for the smaller tools to probe off of, because as I mentioned, these tools are extremely fragile. So if the top surface of your material is rough and saw cut, just a tiny 0.1mm change in the depth of cut from an uneven surface can immediately overload one of these tiny tools. So I've loaded the 0.6mm tool and I need to reprobe the Z height of the tool since the X and Y have not changed between tools, but the Z has. Normally I'd use the Z axis probe to set the tool height, but in this case I'm worried that during the automatic probing operation, the machine might be able to apply just enough pressure to crush the end mill and shatter it before it actually stops the whole Z axis from moving. I'd rather not risk finding out the hard way, so instead I'm using the MPG reel to jog the Z-axis down in 0.01mm increments and visually checking when I see the end mill is just a sliver of air above the material, and I'm setting my Z-height there in the air without actually touching the material. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record, so we're skipping to the 0.3mm end mill. Everything going on is so small that all the machining at 24,000 RPM is happening within a droplet of coolant, which is kind of mind-blowing if you think about it.
So that went well, and now here is the 0.2mm end mill. And now finally on to the 0.1mm end mill. The tip of this tool is so small that it's pretty much impossible to see the spiral of the flutes with the naked eye, but my camera is just barely able to pick it up when zoomed in all the way. So here is our finished part. There are some burrs on the edges of the text for the larger letters, and this is probably because my feed rate was still too fast. For the 0.1mm text however, it seems like I got the feed rates just perfect and it turned out great. The edges are sharp, the curved sections are smooth, and the letters don't look deformed or out of shape at all in any way, so I'm very pleased with how that turned out. Now I want to try finding end mills even smaller than 0.1mm to see just how far we can push it, but I'll leave that as an experience for maybe another video sometime. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out some of our other videos.